Hey family, come on in. Let me know. I'm telling you, I don't know what just happened there. I know this is really, really like a very strong topic that we're dealing with. And I know for sure the enemy does not want this to go forth. But I do want to go ahead and start plowing. When you guys get back in, let me know. And let's just get to sharing. All right. Um, as soon as I see anybody coming in, I'm just going to go ahead and start pulling into this thing. So we want to deal with um, integrity, practicing integrity. I call it higher level Christianity because it's not surface like I was saying. This is not the kind of Christianity where you're looking the part, but you're not the part. It's not the kind of Christianity where you sound the part, but you're not the part in your spirit. You know what I'm saying? You dress the part, but in your heart, you're not a part of what you really, really believe in. And so we really begin to realize that a lot of things that are currently affecting the body of Jesus Christ is not the devil. It's not the devil. Sometimes the enemy is within. It's not the devil. A lot of what we're suffering with as Christians. Hey, First Lady Leonie White, I love you. A lot of what we're suffering with as Christians really even though the enemy is working, Satan has enough wisdom in his, in, his, in, in his wickedness, his devilish wisdom that he's operated in for years now, almost, what, 6,000 years, right? Right, over 6,000 years. He's operated in that. He has enough devilish wisdom to understand how humanity functions. And so he knows that if I can get humanity heart steered or to gaze at a certain direction the way that i did with adam and eve then i know that there's little i have to do some of us think that the devil is really working hard and the truth is satan is not working as hard as you think he is because we're doing the work for him christians with a lack of integrity we're doing the work for him and i think it's time for us to call the things out that's truly causing christ not to be seen for who he is to his body and to his people even if it means that we offend our personal selves, that's how much level of integrity, this integrity, the higher level Christianity that God is calling us to. We think higher level Christianity is miracle signs and wonders. And I'm going to run into this because, like I said, I'm kind of limited to, with time on today. But we think higher level Christianity is us seeing miracle signs and wonder. But let me tell you something. Sorcerer. Um, um, Simon the sorcerer was a witch. He was a diviner. And he had the supernatural power. He accessed it through a demonic realm. So the supernatural power does not necessarily mean and things happening beyond natural level it, that your eyes can see does not necessarily mean that you've entered the higher level of Christianity or life in Christ. It's when your spirit man can look like Christ. It's when your spirit man can live like Christ and operate like Christ. And so a lot of why we're not seeing the power of God in the church is because integrity is lack on the whole on, on, on a personal level and on a corporate level. So integrity is required for God to be able to establish who he truly is through his people. Because he's a covenant keeping God. He's a God of integrity. Right? And so I want to deal with this because I, 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 I don't want to sound offensive. I know because I'm a very strong person. I'm usually always attacked. I, I was born for, you know, I was born for this really and truly my whole life. Like, I know I was born for this. So I know the moment I say something, I'm going to be attacked for whatever I say. But I want you to try my spirit and hear me by the spirit. You know me. Know my spirit. Don't know me according to the flesh and what you think and feel. And if you hear me by the spirit today, I promise you, if you're watching, even if you're a pastor or a leader or a minister in the church, or you're just a Christian, your life is getting ready to change. Because I'm telling you, a lot of what we have going on in the body of Christ right now, and a lot of the areas we're suffering in the church, where we see church hopping church hopping we see adultery we see homosexuality we see the things rampant on the front line it ain't got nothing to do with the devil like i was saying earlier on the enemy has already mastered humanity practicing self-destruction so he knows all i need to do is to sow the seed but when you take the seed within your, within your own spirit and begin to own it now you begin to live out that thing a lot of the things that we see lack of integrity amongst pastors 
in our different regions and 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 in lack of integrity in our churches come on now in where we go in our families in everywhere we see it right and so integrity is actually what keeps a thing together and so things are falling apart because it's lost its standard it's lost its value it's lost the integrity of what it is so my objective on this evening and i see how far we can get is to i want to define integrity what is it what does it mean what should it sound like in your spirit when you think of integrity all right hey god bless you pastor o'neill matux god bless you god bless you man of god then i want for you to then i want for you to answer um i want to answer the question for you how do i know what level of integrity i'm operating in how is my integrity tried how do i know where i'm really at because i can say i have integrity all day i can say within my spirit i'm not split all day i can say within my spirit i'm undivided all day i can say it but the real test is gonna come in different forms that your integrity is gonna be challenged or exposed are you understanding what I'm saying? I want you guys to share this because you know it's going to be good for you. Uh-huh. It's going to be good. And then I want to really just help you on practicing practical Christian, spiritual, biblical integrity. All right? I want to bring you to this scripture. And somebody make note of it. Please, if you can copy and paste it in the chat, I would love for you to do that. The scripture is Galatians 5 and 25. The Amplified Version said this. If we claim, if you claim, all right, not me, but 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 you. I'm gonna keep this in front of me right here so I could scroll and talk with you and have a little attitude while I do it. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So if we claim the Bible says to live by the spirit, if you claim you're Christian, I want y'all to know I'm not talking to people today that don't know God. I, I just want that to be clear. Hey sis, hey Prudence, I love you. Thank you for coming on. I told Jennifer to make sure to get you. All right. I want for you guys to understand clearly. I am not this message is not for unbelievers even though it will benefit them i am particularly dealing with people in the body of jesus christ who claim that they are christians and we lack personal integrity and it shows up in our decision making it shows up in our speech it shows up in our action within your own spirit your own integrity tells on you because it's that powerful and so i want to bring us to this place right so the bible says if you claim to live by the holy spirit yeah yeah god leading me i'm being led by the spirit of god uh-huh all right okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all right so if you claim to be led by the to live by the spirit then you must also walk by the spirit don't just claim it but walk by the spirit and he tells you what it means to walk by the spirit with personal integrity this is the amplified version of galatians 5 and 25 with personal integrity then he tells you godly character and moral courage our conduct our personal integrity is empowered <clears throat> by the holy spirit our personal integrity as a christian must be empowered by the holy spirit if you claim that you walk in the spirit so i need you guys to stop right here and be in the spirit for a minute if your personal integrity as a Christian, as a Christian, means that your conduct, your moral standards and values are motivated by the Holy Spirit, then what does that say about your integrity if it's not motivated by him? Then it means that something drives your integrity. Your, your, there's a spirit, either your spirit, the enemy or the Holy Spirit, something is driving and feeding the level of integrity that you operate in. Come on now. Are you understanding? Because I want to make it so clear. So, so I want to first deal with why is integrity, why integrity, why integrity? I'm going to define it for a second, but I want to deal with why. I want to deal with the why integrity is important to every single believer, to every single relationship. Come on now. To every single fellowship. On your job why integrity is important because if, if if mcdonald's come on now begin to sell chick-fil-a food it's lost its integrity because mcdonald isn't known for um the things that chick-fil-a is known for come on now so if if, if mcdonald's um start um selling i don't know i'm thinking of something 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Popeyes. <laughs> I'm hungry, y'all. <laughs> All right? What I'm saying is it loses its integrity. You understand what I'm saying? So you got to you, you got to represent by not just by face value what's in your spirit, but truly, truly that thing that's coming out of your heart. So let me tell you why integrity is important. Number one, it's just two reasons. Number one, integrity is important because God requires it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I said it. Mm-hmm. Put it there. Integrity is important because God requires it. Why is integrity important, first lady? You coming up here, you bashing people, because, you know, people always say, I'm talking about somebody. Well, I guess, you know, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you. Mm. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you, and guess what? I'm talking about me, too. Because why integrity? Because God requires it of us Christians. You know what? I'm going to call y'all Christians. The whole time here. You know why integrity? The Holy Spirit requires it. What do I mean by this? When David sinned, you know, y'all remember? He sinned. He, 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 he. How did he sin? The Bible said it was time for the kings to go to war. And King David, instead of going to war, decided to stay home. He was on his balcony and he saw Bathsheba taking a bath. I think that's how she got her name. She took a lot of baths, right? Bathsheba. And so he saw Bathsheba taking a bath. And he saw her and his heart began to lust after her. At the moment, he didn't think about the cost to the kingdom, to his family, to her marriage, to herself. David wasn't knowing what it was going to cost, but his pleasure was so dominant that it override his integrity. It showed and exposed what he truly believed to be true. And so David saw Bathsheba and he called for her. And he slept with her, got her pregnant. When he realized she was pregnant, in the middle of war, he sent for her husband. This is in the middle of battle. Because now, what happened is, you see, when you miss one step of integrity, you're going to always have to try to cover up. That's why I hear somebody said, if you tell one lie, you're always going to have to keep trying to tell another lie to cover another lie to cover another lie. That's why God is just truth. He's just absolute truth. He don't cast no shadow. There's nothing in him to cover. Why integrity? Because God requires it. So David went, he slept with Bathsheba, he didn't think for a second, okay, it was going to cost you a little boy, an innocent child. You never read of any other children that Bathsheba had before David. So he even violated the sacred marriage space of, of, of the woman and her husband. The woman and her husband, and he gave her the first child and he knew it was his. And when he realized, okay, she's pregnant, he don't want to sleep with his wife, so I can cover this thing up, I'm going to kill him. He shed innocent blood just to cover up his sin because I don't want nobody to see me, the king, doing that when I could have several concubines and God would be okay with it because it was okay then. God, God would be okay with it with you your, and all your concubines. God would have been okay with it. But you were so, you didn't even think about the fact that you could have get any woman in the kingdom you want. And you decided to violate somebody's marriage and violate somebody's life. And then, then you're going to do the cover up. So David went now, right? This is what David did. So he's sitting on his throne. No, he got the woman pregnant. Know what he did. Then he sit down on the throne acting like nothing ain't wrong. So the king, you know, Nathan came and Nathan having a conversation and Nathan said, you know what, David, man, I love you. Whatever is in your heart, go ahead and, you know, just do it, execute it. And, and they're there in that level of friendship and, and he's not exposing none of what he did. He's there with his friends. He's not even telling his friends what he did, but he's doing the cover up. And when Nathan left, God struck Nathan in his heart and began to deal with him and said, eh, 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 you're going to go right back to David because David is so far from me right now in that decision that he's made that he think I'm okay with it, that he could sit on the throne and think just because you're in power, you can misuse your power. It's a lack of integrity and I'm going to deal with it. And so the Holy Spirit went, Nathan came and Nathan began to tell David the story. 
and David brought judgment to his own self. Did you know how he brought judgment to his own self? Because when Nathan told him the story, he said, that man deserved to die. Nathan turned around and said, you're that man. So within your own conscience, you know you deserve death. Within your own conscience, you know what you deserve. But as long as it's on you, you don't think you should. Nathan turned around and said, you're that man. You see, when we lack integrity, we can't really see who we are. A lack of integrity blinds us. It's self-deception. A lack of integrity is birth out of self-deception. When you start deceiving yourself that you're, 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 you're all good when nobody's good but God, you're blinding yourself and you're not giving yourself an opportunity to truly, truly walk in integrity. Because one of the first steps to truly walk in integrity is to admit that, look, I'm not always right. I don't always got it together. I'm not always good. And if you have not come to that place as a Christian, then you've not really, truly, fully started walking integrity. All you're doing is just a cover-up. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And so God requires it. So here's David praying in Psalm 51. He said, verse 6, he said, Behold, you desire truth in the innermost being. You desire inward integrity from me, God. You desire truth on the inside of me. And in the hidden part of my spirit and in my heart, you're going to cause me to know wisdom. The reason why we can't even walk in God's wisdom is because we lack integrity on the inside. God is not going to hand over his wisdom to people who lack integrity. David said, I, 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 I didn't even have the wisdom to do the right thing because I, I hid the truth from you in my own heart. But I come to tell you, God, I've sinned against you. And so the Lord requires it. David said it. You, you require, you desire truth. It's not my wife that needed it from me. It's not my a husband or my boss or my mother and my father, my children and my church family that needs integrity from me. God desires integrity in your own spirit. Now, number two, why is this important? It is important because the power of God cannot be released without Walking in integrity. Okay, what do I mean by this? Don't forget to share and tag somebody in this. All right? The power of God cannot be released in our lives without integrity. So God desire it. But why does God desire it? Because its power can flow without integrity. Let me prove it to you. So the Bible says, Matthew 21 and 12 to 14. And Jesus entered into the temple of God. And cast out, it was a violent thing. For those of us who have this idea of this soft baby, just um, wimpy Jesus. The Bible said he cast out. He drove them out. That's an aggressive word. So he got angry at the lack of integrity that he saw in the temple. And he began to do a whip. You think he got up and this was what he was doing? Oh, you money changers, go away. Get out of the house of God. Are you serious? The, the, the level, God's integrity for God's house, zeal for God's house, burned within him that he couldn't stand to see the foolishness continue. So Jesus got the whip and he began to whip them all out, the Bible says. Cast them out that sold and bought in the temple. And overthrew the tables. Overthrew the places of illegal activity. Overthrew the tables of money changers. And the seat. So let me tell you something people of God. You see when God comes in and he requires integrity. He will overthrow some things. And he will deceit some people. Because that's just how he works. When he requires integrity in his house. And God don't care who it is. I watched the other day. I saw the, the video. I don't know if you guys see it. Of the pastor that dropped dead right in the church. The moment he told the church. He was sleeping on his wife. In all of us for 20 years of marriage. They've been together. He confessed to an adultery that he never told his wife. He went to him, he told his wife about the adultery and said, I've been in this affair. I can't keep it no more. This thing is eating me out. And the wife tell him, you got to have to go before the church and deal with this. Because you think you only violated me. You violated the people of God. And as soon as the man was done confessing to the whole church. Y'all go and Google it and YouTube it when you're done. As soon as he was done confessing in front of the whole church. He dropped dead. And this is modern time I'm talking about. Because I don't care who it is. And how much God loves us. That's why the Bible said it's because of his mercies. While we're not consumed. You know the hidden things on the inward part. God requires truth in it. 
He requires truth in it. I don't mean to offend nobody and be ghetto and stuff like that. Y'all know my personality by now. So you should be able to know how to receive from me. Come on now. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So Jesus drive out the, 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 the money changers. Turn over the tables. And, and, and turn over the seat of the people who sold doves. Selling the work of the Holy Spirit. Sick lack of integrity. Freely you've received. Freely you must give. No, you gotta prophesy and sow thousand dollars in my in my life every single month to maintain this anointing and this covering I have for you. It's witchcraft, it's sorcery, it's lack of integrity. Jesus God Almighty. And said unto them, It is written, My house, it ain't your house. My house. And I want for you to think because you just think this is the church. You are in his house. Your body. Your temple. Your temple. Your temple. My house shall be called a house of prayer. But you have made it into a den of thieves. And look what happened in verse 14. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple. And he healed them. I said all of that to say this. Because there was a lack of integrity in the temple. The power of God could not operate. I look all over in America. I'm in America, so I can't talk about nowhere else right now. I'm living in America right now. And I look all over America. When I came here, I wept. My first year in America, I thought there was sin in Jamaica. But I'm coming from a church in Jamaica. And there's witnesses right now on this um, live with me that can tell you. I watch people that used to sin in my church. And my pastor would give them one and two warnings. And three warnings and four warnings. And they would still be sinning. And all we would be at church is on a Sunday morning. And we would hear, we have a special announcement for you. And I see the picture of this person's face go up on the camera. And I would hear my pastor say, we've been trying to work with brother so and so. But brother so and so kept sleeping around with the woman in the church. And as of now, he's already slept with over 15 women that has come forth. At this point, we have no nothing else to do. After all the corrections that we've given and we've not seen any change, we have nothing else to do. But for to sit him down and to let it be known publicly in the church that we are aware of what he's doing. We've corrected it. We don't participate in it. We don't agree with it. It's not God. And it's not the standard of the house and it's not the standard of the body of Christ. We've been helping the young ladies in the background. We've been giving them counsel. And as of now, if any woman from here go to go to choose to be in a relationship with this man, practically, you are going to be on your own because you already know what we've checked and what we've done. I sat in church and saw that. In American churches, we don't do that because it's all about image. We don't do that. And I watched my pastor did that. And you wonder why there was miracles every single service. We had so much miracles. I was sick of miracles. I was sick of miracles. When it was time for miracles taking place, I see crippled people getting healed, blind eyes getting open. I got so, 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 so norm to miracles. I was sitting down sleeping, waiting for the word because there was so much power in the house because there was integrity in the church. There was integrity in the church. And, and, and no, we can't see the power of God because you have pastors sleeping around. You have people in rebellion church hopping. And in the name of calling leadership toxic and wicked and controlling when you lack integrity, when you're nasty, when you gossip, when you're ungodly, when you cause mess in the church and people can't feed from the things of God and we lack integrity and we can't see the power of God and you're homosexual and you're a liar and you're a thief. And we lack, this is strong. This is strong. I've seen a person I know personally. And when I found out this young man was sleeping with pastors. When I found the thing out, I wanted to vomit. Like I was in my first trimester, sick to my stomach. Because it lacks integrity. And we think that God is okay with it. And we tolerate it. Because cause you're the musician. We tolerate it because you're a favorite preacher. And the world don't want to come. The lame don't want to come. The blind don't want to come. Because it's already messed up in the kingdom. And nobody holds anybody accountable to the standards. Let me tell you something. I have a friend, Leonie, I don't know. First Lady Leonie, I don't know if Trina is watching. 
But my God, I could have kissed Trina right now, man. Listen to me. I have a friend back in Jamaica when we were there and I was in church. Because y'all know I just got saved and I'm already super saved. So when I got saved, I felt like I knew what I was doing. So you know I had a few little pictures on Facebook that, all right. I mean, it wasn't really safe. I mean, I had on clothes, so I don't know what her problem was. But Trina called me one day. She said, Sister April, I just want to show you something, you know, because... You know I love you. I just want to show you this. And I want to tell you that I see that you're growing. And she said, I just want to tell you that. I don't want nobody to misjudge you. Because I know you, you're making a change in your life. Thank you, Lily. Talk Trina. Trina changed my life with this. And she said, April, you know, you're growing. You're making a change. Mupau. That's it. Trina Mupau. And she said, April, you're growing. And I see that you're changing. I see you come out of a lot. But your Facebook profile picture looks a little seductive. And I don't want for nobody to think that you're still in that life. You know when Trina tell me, I was offended. I was offended at her because I think you shouldn't, nobody shouldn't tell me nothing. Because you know what, any level of correction is going to bring offense. It, it's just Bible. The Bible tell you, you get corrected, you're going to feel offended. It's Bible. Like, you can't go around it. And, but when I walked away, she had so much love in, in the correction that when I left, it wasn't just Trina that was speaking to me. My integrity was speaking to me. Because within my own spirit, I remember when I posted it, I felt the seduction. But I figured that since it was just up here, and it's not like certain stuff was out, it was okay. But I could, it was a picture from my past. And I remember when I took that picture, that thing was in me. And, and she saw that. And she said, it doesn't represent where you're at now. But let me tell you something. I love that woman of God so much today because somebody loved me enough to hold me accountable to the walk. I said, I'm going to walk. And I remember going on Facebook and deleting everything that was a picture from my past that had that seduction in it because I don't want nobody to tie me back to that stuff. But when we lack integrity, we can't be corrected and we tolerate all sorts of stuff. And that's why there's no power of God. So we come service after service after service and God can't move because there's a lack of integrity in the marriages, in the families, in the ministry. And God can't get what he wants to get done. What's integrity? This big word that we can't spell without spell check unless you're a, a third grade teacher. What's integrity? Let's define this so we can have an understanding of what personal practicing. Hey, first lady, Tanya, I love you, sugar. Practicing integrity. What does this mean? Um, personal inner honesty. I'm about to tear up some things right now because I feel the Holy Ghost all over me. I'm about to rip some devils out of town. Y'all better talk some people in this right this minute because... Tag them because you love them. Tag them because you want them to share and tell so you don't want them to miss this. Tag them. Come on now. Hey, Lori, I love you. <laughs> I love you, Lori. <laughs> so it means personal inner honesty. How many times we've lied to ourselves? How many times we've lied to ourselves about the state where we're at? And that's why we ain't got no change in our lives. Lie to ourselves. Because we lack personal in, in, inner honesty honesty so i'm not really true to myself you ever feel when there's something wicked in you but you override it because you don't see it fully manifest but you can feel it's in you i've been there i've been there i've been at the place where i hear myself said if i ever get a chance i don't know what i would do and i'm praying god keep me don't even let that door open because I feel that thing in me. And if that door is ever open, that beast is going to come out. That's why the Bible said in Colossians 3 and 5 that you got to kill the animalistic instincts and desires in you because it's lurking within you. It's lurking within you. When I was walking in my transformation, I was praying because all that used to talk to me was somebody's husband. And when I was walking, knowing my walk with God, I was praying, God, please 
Don't let another married man look at me. Because there was a weakness in my spirit. There was a certain kind of married men that I, I didn't want everybody married man. It never worked like that. There was a certain kind of men that had to, there had to be a certain kind of age, a certain kind of status, that it was something about them that had to, that it, 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 it something had to fit. It was a certain spirit. Because something in me was lacking. Come on, I'm going to kill this thing today. And I remember when I got saved, I'm praying. I used to lock myself in the house, tie myself to my spiritual altar. I lived in prayer and fasting because I had a fear I wasn't fully delivered. And I could feel that demon in me. I could feel if somebody made the wrong move right now, this beast in me is about to come out. But when you lack inner honesty, you can't be free. And that's why so many people are not delivered. So many of us are not free because we lack that inner honesty. Then it means to be internally moral, internally morally undivided. So it means to not be split on the inside. You're not double-minded on the inside. You're not two-faced on the inside. You're one way. The word integrity in Hebrew brings the idea of one. I'm one with how I think. One with how I feel. Hallelujah. One with how I act. That's integrity. It's that oneness. God bless you, Pastor Jason. Oh, I'm so honored to see you, Pastor Jason. Thank you. God bless you, sir. Pastor Jason Sides, God bless you. And so it's that oneness. Integrity means when the Bible said, hear you, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. It's not just, oh, we just got one God. That word one dear represents more than just there is one God and there's none beside him. It means the Lord your God is one. One in his thoughts, one in his actions, one in his deeds, in his behavior, in his judgment, in his justice. So God is not another way inside than he is on the outside. That's why when he said Moses saw his face, might as well Moses, if you see my back, might as well you see my front. Because every part of me is light. Because I'm, cause I'm integrity. I'm holy. That's why the angels, when they surround him, all they can see, angel on the left, angel on the right, and they're all seeing the same thing. Every angle of God they took, every position of God that they surround, with many eyes all over their bodies, they're shouting the same thing. Holy, holy, holy. I look up the top. I look down the bottom. You're holy. You're holy. You're holy. You're holy when nobody watch it. You're holy when you're alone. You're holy when you're on your phone. You're holy not watching porn. You're holy not fornicating. You're holy not stealing from your boss. Every direction I look at you, you are the same. You are inti in integrated to be one. To be one, you're integrated. You, you, what you say is what you think. It's what you believe. It's in the DNA of your soul. And DNA don't lie. Holy integrity and the hidden part. Everywhere they look at you, can they see the same Jesus? Everywhere they look at you. When I look at your sexuality, can I see Jesus? When I look at your love life with people, are you the same Jesus? Are you the same? Integrity. Integrated. That's what holy means in Hebrew. Integrated, one, complete, whole. There's no two sides to this. God don't cast shadows. Are you understanding me? Let's hurry up. Oh, Jesus, help me, God. Help me, Holy Spirit. It means so I'm not splitting my soul. I don't tell you I love you today. And then in my heart, I'm trying to kill you like Judas. I'm smiling. And then in the back of my heart, I can't wait to leave to go tell somebody your husband just left you. I spat your shoulder and said, you know, sis, I'm with you in this. And I can't wait to go tell somebody. Because now finally, I got something over you. That's the level of integrity that we lack. And we don't check our spirit. Because we, 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 we practice the lack of integrity. That when it's time to do it, we, we, we get offended in it. And we don't even know that it's, it's, it's the right thing. Because we've been doing the wrong thing for so long. That the wrong thing feels right. It means to be absolutely moral. Absolute in your moral standards. Which is to be unwavering in what you believe to be right. Unwavering. When you got to waver. I don't trust people who, who can't make up their minds. I'm telling you that. 
I do not trust people. The moment I'm in a situation with somebody and you can't make a decision, tell the truth. It makes me uncomfortable. I could be having a conversation with my husband. And my husband that I love and trust so much. And both of us are there. And we can't even decide on dinner. And it makes me uncomfortable. Because I don't like to be in the place where we're in between decisions. And he don't like it for me too. And we're going to have to decide on something. If God is God, serve God. If Baal, which is the God of flesh, is your God, then serve that. But stop dancing between two opinions. Because that's not integrity. You can't be faithful to your wife when you're at church and unfaithful to your wife when you go to work. Work like that. Integrity is integrity whether you're sleeping or you're awake. It's who you are. Come on now. So it's to be unwavering in what you believe to be right. Which means I will absolutely or I am absolutely not going to do X, Y, and Z, whatever that is, under absolutely no circumstances. It means to be absolute in your morality. Absolute. Under the Messiah. Now fix this, Jesus. So, for example, like myself, I am absolutely against abortion. You know why? Because I've already done one. When I had the abortion, it drove me to suicide. I became suicidal after the abortion. And the abortion began to cause me a deep void. And it was a deep pain in my spirit I carried for about 10 years until I was able to come out and say I did it. And, and that thing held me down in so much bondage. And I remember I would be in church right there in Jamaica. I was there worshiping, lifting up my hands. And I would hear the devil come and whisper in my ears, you better shut up and put those hands down because you're a murderer. And I would begin to cry. And the people in the church around me, they didn't have no understanding. They thought it was the presence of God. It was me fighting for my life. Because Satan was telling me, you had an abortion. Nobody know what you did, but I know what you did last night. You slept with so-and-so husband. I know what you did. I know what you did. And I would be lifting up my hands and the devil would be right in my ears, waving my actions right in front of me because I wasn't absolute in my decision. I wasn't absolute in my morality. I wavered. It means to be internally set on certain principles. Internally set on certain principles. So there's absolutely, I'm just not going to have an abortion because it costs me too much already. So after I've experienced that, I've made a decision in my spirit that even if I got raped, even if they tell me the child might be retarded and sick and have Down syndrome, that's not going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to, going to get an excuse again to take somebody else's life. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it under absolutely any circumstance. I'm not going to do it. I'm telling you that because it was a place I had to come to because I'd lack so many level of integrity that I could have had an abortion and I was sitting right in the church. I was serving in, in, in the drama ministry and, and I was, I would be acting out drama in, 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 in my whole scene. And I used to hate it for some reason. They kept giving me some, some, some part that just fit who I am at the moment. At the moment, at the moment, I was so a little offended. I was like, what, they see something in me? But I got the parts to play. And for some reason, they always hand me these parts to play. And I don't know, there must have been something prophetic about it. Because the last time, they handed me a part to play. One of the part was, God bless me, I became rich and married to a doctor. And his name, his name was Rufus. There we are. We're back, right? Yes. So I was saying it must have been prophetic because they they gave me a play to play this time. And the, they said, you're going to be married to a doctor from overseas and you're coming from foreign. And his name is, is, is Rufus. <laughs> and it so happened that about four months later, my life literally turned out to be that. But what I'm saying is, people of God, this is what I'm saying. When there is integrity it guides your moral principles. You're set on a certain principles. There's some things I'm just not going to do. I'm not going to cheat on my taxes. I'm just absolutely not going to do it. We get big tax bills and we have to pay them. 
tithing ain't, ain't go, ain't, tithing don't mean I don't give to Caesar what is Caesar. Like, okay, I tithe so I don't have to pay my taxes. <laughs> don't pay your taxes and see what Uncle Sam will do. See, see if Caesar won't come for you. So, so it's, it's that you don't waver on, on the principles. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I'm just not going to sleep with another man other than my husband. Have I been tempted? We've all been tempted. I'm sure he's been tempted too. Every day the devil tell me you should have been with somebody else. You see, girl, look, your life would have been better. No, the devil haven't told me that in a while. But Satan would always come and he would always tell me all sorts of stuff, especially when we were going through. So even then, my marriage get tried. But I know now, this is the man that I want. This is the man I want to be with. But you're not going to know it until you're put in certain situations. Don't tell me you're faithful until you have an opportunity to commit adultery. Don't tell me that you're truthful until you have an opportunity to lie. Don't tell me you have integrity until it is proven. It has to be revealed. It has to be exposed. Don't tell me you're honest until I can see that you handle things honestly and you're not shady in your spirit. <clears throat> All right? So it means... Also, self-accountability, which we don't have, but um, it means self-account. Don't be offended, you know, you know, we, 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 okay, you have it, but the rest of us, all the others of us watching, they don't have it, but you, you have it, all right? <laughs> it's self-accountability, self-awareness, and self-accountability concerning our conduct, our motives, and our desire as it relates to our morality. That's what integrity is. It's self-awareness. Am I aware? Am I aware? Am I aware? Internal, internal integrity, internal honesty. That even if, even if Paul and Peter don't know, if pastor and first lady don't know, and if nobody knows, and my closest friend don't know, and my sister don't know, I know within me where I lack integrity. I can feel my lack of integrity within my own spirit. I know, you know within you where you lack integrity. You know you're not fooling yourself. You know you're not fooling yourself. We just don't want to be honest and be hold each other to the personal accountability. Hold each other to the personal accountability. Listen to me. Our integrity is like the DNA of who we are. It reveals how we think. It is revealing how we think, how we speak, and how we act. Just like our DNA cannot lie, your integrity cannot lie. If somebody come to me right now and said, Pastor Johnson was gossiping about you. You know what? The DNA test for Pastor Johnson's spirit would say that in the case of gossiping, he is not the father. You know how I know? Because I know his integrity. Because I've known him for years and he doesn't do it around me. He, he hates to disclose things. He's uncomfortable when he has to do it. But there's things that we have to do, deal with. But certain things is not in his DNA. If somebody come and tell me, you know, Elijah was around there and he was dogging out pastor and he was treating his wife a certain way and he was acting out of control. I know that the DNA of minister Elijah don't speak that about him. So in the DNA test of his spirit of who he is, I know that that ain't truth. Hey, that's why I know that people don't know God's integrity when Satan can come and tell you that God don't love you and God won't take care of you. That means you don't know God's DNA. You don't know because DNA cannot lie. His DNA said he's faithful. His DNA said he's truth. His DNA said he has integrity. His DNA said he will love you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. His DNA said his goodness and his mercy follow you. His DNA said he's compassionate. His DNA said his love never fail. I watch people blame God for things when God is blameless. How can you blame <laughs> blameless? What blame are you going to give blameless? That you're blameless in this? Is that what you're going to give? You're blameless in this, God? God is blameless. I used to get angry at God for every single thing. When I used to sin and then my sin cost me, I get angry at God. And then God had to show me one day I'm reading the Bible and it says, God is blameless. So I said, if God is blameless, how did I come to blame him for what just happened to me? He's blameless. So now I want to deal with this. Let's, let me just give you this right here and then I'm done for today and then I'll see how we pick up in next week because I'm not going to rush this. 
So why integrity? Because God desired it on the inside. Why integrity? Because the power of God cannot really come in the church without integrity. It cannot happen. And so, let me show you this. Our integrity governs our morality. We can know what is morally right, but knowledge is not integrity. Not because you know it. Means. I knew what I was doing when I was doing it wasn't right. Knowledge is not integrity. The amount of your book knowledge, your Bible knowledge is not integrity. Our integrity is actually what dictates our behavior regardless of our knowledge. So I can know right and still do wrong because within my integrity, I'm shady and I choose to do that. But God requires integrity on the inward parts. He requires integrity on the inward part. Let me tell you something. The Bible says the righteous man, his integrity guides his life. It means it guides his decision. He will not make a decision that violate who he is in his spirit. Violate who he is in his spirit. How many times we've done that? I don't know about anybody, but when I was in the world, I never forgot. When we were supposed to get married, my husband said, okay, um, looks like we need to take things up to the next level. And I'm like, all right. So I'm already, you know, like, okay. He said to me, well, I'm going to need you to go and get, a, get an STD test. Oh, Jesus, when he said it. I felt my knees shaking. Because you know why? Because for the last two years, even though I wasn't living in sin, when I was living in sin, I came on thinking to myself, I was so scared to go because I said every day, if I even see a little bump on my skin, I said, oh Lord, I got AIDS now. Oh Jesus, I got HIV now. Oh God, I'm gonna, I lack integrity in, in the level of perversion I was living in to the point where I had a doctor friend and I made him prescribe me. I had all sorts of, that's why I knew medicine for STD. He's like, where are you going with all of these things? I'm just like, give me man, just give me. Because I lacked integrity to the point where pleasure was more important than integrity to me. So I walked around with all sorts of pills because I lacked the, the integrity in my sexuality. And I was trying to cover it up, hoping that I could patch my things as I was going. But now that I met someone who was willing to commit to me and give me marriage and said, no, look, this is where we're going to draw the line. Because if you... If you test positive for this, we can have no relationship. And let me tell you something about integrity. Listen to me. I'm going somewhere with it. Let me tell you something about integrity. That's what I'm saying. We don't know the level of integrity that we have. This is some deep stuff. It's so raw, but I know you can relate. We don't know the level of integrity that we have until there is an opportunity for pleasure or pressure. Your integrity is revealed under pleasure or pressure. It's two things. It's what you will do because you want it. And it's what you will do because you're going through it. Your integrity is exposed under pleasure and pressure. So when my husband said that, right? So I went to the doctor and I'm there and I'm like, oh Lord, I'm nervous because for the first time I'm getting ready to face the reality that this is how you've lived. And if you come up with anything, this is where you're at. Um, let me tell you what integrity will do. And I'm in the office and I prayed a prayer going in. And I was so sincere. I said, God, guys, you don't know the, I was so, I said, God, if you make sure that I just get this one chance, just this one chance, God, I promise you, I will never fornicate a day in my life again. God, I'm going to stay away from sin. If you give me a clean bill of health after the life I know I've lived, I promise you, God, I'll never do it again. And I cried in the car, wiped up my tears, went in. They're pulling all of the blood and everything. And when I had to get the result, I'm sitting in there shaking out of my clothes. 
Because I felt like I was under a death sentence because for the last two years of my life, I hear the devil telling me, you have AIDS, you're, never, you're not going to be able to have kids, you're going to die, you're just sick, and you're scared to face it. No man is going to want to be with you because you're nasty in your body. And I never forgot when I went to the doctor and I was tested negative. Can I tell you what happened? You want to hear about integrity? Here is the moral of the story. Did you know, I mean, as soon as quick as they could give me the clean bill in my hand do you know what ran through my mind i literally hear a thought that said no i can do it now and play it safe because now that i know that i'm okay i think i can do it and and let me tell you how i know it wasn't the devil because when the thought was suggested it woke up something in me when the thought was suggested it woke that thing up in me and what I'm saying is, just when I was going in and I was in need and scared for my life because I didn't know that was going to be the determining factor of where I'm sitting today in front of you, that test. And I begged God and said, God, oh, I wouldn't do it. And the second I got the result, I'm already in my mind, stripped naked. I'm already in my mind, gone. And I begin to realize, people of God, integrity is a deep thing. Some of us, you don't, if people can uncover what's in your mind, if people can uncover what's in your heart, and that's what drive us. That's what drive us out of the will of God. Drive us out of the things of God. Because we're not being true in our spirit when these things are lurking. That nasty spirit of lust and fornication, it was lurking. It was still there. It didn't go nowhere. It was only dormant for two years. And still in my spirit, right in me but god loved me enough god loved me enough to have covered me to have convicted me to have dealt heavily with my heart to show me that you just begged me for this and i gave you what you wanted and in me giving you what i've wanted you've not shown me where you lack integrity this is how we live our life and call ourselves christians god if you bless me i'm gonna tithe if you bless me, I'm going to tithe. You pull up the scripture and you make covenant with God. And God bless you. And the church has yet to see your tithe. No integrity. No integrity. Listen, I'm going to stop for now because I've said a lot. And like I said, I know that we got to run. But I'm going to stop for now. Tell, tell you what, tomorrow for Bible study, we're going to be doing the Christ in me series. I want to deal with what happens when the Christ sends his Holy Spirit to live in us. I want to deal with the expression of Christ in the life of the believer. So tomorrow we're going to be dealing with the expression of Christ. Christ in me. The expression of Christ in the life of the believer. And it's going to be so practical. Because I want to really walk you through. Like is Christ really in you? Is he really in you? Living through you? Is Christ in me? So I want to be able to really deal with that as we continue with our Jesus culture. But I'm going to stop for now with the integrity stuff and we'll pick up on next week because the signal here is so bad. But um, I want to be able to deal with what happens when we operate in integrity. I want to show you all the scriptures, you know, different things. I want to show you that your lack of integrity can cost somebody's life. I want to show you in the Bible how lack of integrity could destroy a whole nation. Lack of integrity can bring judgment to a house. Lack of integrity can bring judgment to a family. I want to be able to show you in scripture what, what not having integrity will do. But I also want to show you the benefit of having integrity. You must have inner honesty within your spirit. That's why I can't fake it with people. There's people right now that I don't have fellowship with anymore because you, we, you, you violated what I believe in morally and I'm not going to violate my conscience to have friendship with you. I'm not going to do it. What you do and what you practice, I don't agree with it. I had a friend, I had to stop being friends with her because she kept sleeping around on her husband and I couldn't do it anymore. Our friendship isn't just because I love you as a person and I'm ignoring what you do. I can't ignore what, I, what you do if I love you. So we, we have to cut our relationship because I'll always love you. But my standards shifted when my integrity shifted. So I can't keep doing that. I used to have a friend, me and her were chief gossips. Oh my goodness, we would fall asleep gossiping. I mean, if there, I mean, we 
would fall asleep gossiping, run up the phone bill gossiping. But when I got saved and the Holy Ghost came in, I didn't want to talk about people anymore. I don't want to do it. That's why I hate that thing so much because that thing is destructive. That's why I can, I have integrity now when it comes on to gossiping. I hate it because I know what it can do. So, so when I got saved and the Holy Ghost came to live, I cut that. I can't do it. I can't, I can't do it. I tell my boyfriend, brother, you say, I can't do it. I can't. I, I, me and you and Jesus, we can't do it at the same time. We ain't going to have no spiritual threesome over here and violate my Christianity and violate my moral standards. We can't do it. I'm not doing it with you. I'm not doing it with you. We can't do it. We're not doing it. And I had to cut those things. That's what I'm saying. I struggle when I see Christians who claim to love God. That's what he said. If you claim to walk by the spirit, man, walk by the spirit. Walk by the spirit through personal integrity. Because when you really get to a certain place with God, certain things you just can't tolerate. You can't tolerate that. Look, I love you guys so much. I love you. I bless you. I gotta run. All right? I really, really hope you were blessed. There's so much more I would love to say. But the internet ain't really been kind to us today. And... Um, I'm going to continue next week, but I'll give you lots of other stuff. Okay. I'll show you, I'll show you in scripture what it can do. And I'll take my time next week and we'll do a little bit more, but I love you guys. And my challenge to you as Christians is let's walk in integrity in everything we do in our churches. Let's have integrity. Those of us who serve on the leadership, let's have integrity. Let's not tear down the work of God. Let's have integrity for what Christ died for. Let's have integrity in our sexuality. Let's have integrity in our fidelity, in our marriage. Come on, let's have integrity that our eyes aren't set on anything else because you can be looking at something and your, your eyes in your heart, it's somewhere else. Come on. So I want to work with that so we can tighten up this thing because integrity is important for the next level that the body of Christ is going to go to. I love you guys. I pray you were blessed. I pray you were blessed. I really, really love you guys. All right? Mwah. I'm going to see y'all tomorrow. Don't miss Bible study. We're going to come in early because, you know, it's back to school. So we can't stay as late because the kids got to be in bed by 8 o'clock or 8.30. I don't know. All right. So don't forget we are a little bit more sharper. Once school begins, we try to. The summer days are over. So I need everybody in the house early. Okay, early. All right. I love you guys so, so much. And I pray you really, really were blessed. Mwah. I love you. God bless you.